Hello, and welcome to another video. Today, we will be learning about exponential functions. First, we're going to take a look at different types of functions. Uh, here, we have three different examples that you will be seeing throughout your high school classes and in your SAT and ACT. The first type is going to be a linear function. You are very familiar with y equals mx plus b or the point slope formula, which we talked about last class. So all linear functions look like a line. That's why it's called linear. All the quadratic functions have a parabola shape, or you can think of it as a U shape. And then their equations will start with an X squared. Uh, this is the one that we're going to be focused on today, which is exponential. So it looks something similar to that. And then we'll talk about how changing the numbers affects uh, the graph. Uh, exponential functions are very important in the real world. You will see it in a lot of real world examples like population, bacteria, anything dealing with money, uh, radioactive decay, half-life, spread of diseases, etc. Uh, again, in addition, you will see that on the SAT because they will include different questions uh, related to exponential functions. Some key characteristics of exponential functions that we'll talk about. First, let's look at the exponential function's general form. f of x equals y times b to the power of x, or y equals a times b to the power of x. b does have to be greater than 0 or positive. Uh, a and b are going to be constant, where a can never be 0. Because if you make a 0, then all of the output values will be 0, creating a linear function. Same thing, if you make uh, your power of 1, this will stay constant, which will not create an exponential function. As we talked about this last time, A represents the initial amount or starting value. And then B is going to represent the base or your rate. Uh, it's called the base because it's the base and then this is the power. And if you remember when we talked about geometric sequences, that is also the rate or the common ratio. When we look at exponential functions, it's divided into two subcategories. The first one is going to be exponential growth. So if your A is greater than 0 and your B is greater than 1, all your exponential growth functions will have a similar shape to this one. If you change your rate, it can be steeper or it can be less steep. You can change where it crosses the y-axis, but generally the left side will look like that, approaching zero, and the right side will increase with that bound. So keep that in mind. The other option is exponential decay, where a has to be greater than zero, and b has to be between zero and one. So it can be a decimal, it can be a fraction. So for example, I can make my b be equal 0.75, I can make my b be equal 3 over 4. Both of these will create an exponential decay because, again, your b is less than 1, but greater than 0. So again, same thing. They will always look like that. Again, you can change the point where it crosses the y-axis, or you can change, change it to make it be steep or less steep. The left side will always look like that, and then the right side will always look like that, approaching 0. Some important key features about exponentials, increasing versus decreasing. Exponential functions are always increasing or always decreasing no matter what. They will never switch from one to another one, so therefore there will never be any relative or local extrema. Remember, in order for a local or relative extrema to happen, it needs to change from either increasing to decreasing, creating a maximum, or decreasing to increasing, creating a minimum. When we look at concavity, concave up versus concave down. Exponential functions are always uh, concave up or always concave down. They will never switch concavity. So again, we will have no points of inflection. Remember, points of inflection happen when your function changes concavity. Since it's never changing concavity, then you never have a point of inflection. And behavior for exponential functions in general form, as the input values increase or decrease without bound, the output values will increase, decrease without bound, or they will approach zero. So that's what this is saying. One of them will always be one of these, where it's either approaching positive or negative infinity, and the other one will always be zero. 
keep that in mind as we do the problems. If you don't have either one of these two, then that means something is wrong. Let's look at some examples where we're going to be writing limit statements for the end behavior of the following exponential functions. So for A, we're looking at the left limit, so the limit as x approaches negative infinity. I'm going to just call this f of x to make it easier. That way I don't have to put the equation since I don't have it. It's going to be, again, you're approaching on the left side. So you're approaching zero, getting closer and closer to it, but never getting to zero. If I look at the right limit, the limit as x approaches positive infinity for f of x, I look at this side. Now I see that it's increasing without bound, and it will increase forever. So therefore, I know that my limit is positive infinity. Looking at example B, again, the left limit, the limit as x approaches negative infinity. I will call this one h of x of h of x is equal to. So I'm looking at this side. I can see that it's decreasing with that bound. So I know that I'm approaching negative infinity. For my right limit, the limit as x approaches positive infinity for h of x is equal to zero because again, I'm approaching getting closer and closer to zero. C looks a little bit different because they didn't give me a graph. They just gave me an equation but I can use the information that I went over on the previous page to know if it's an exponential growth or an exponential decay. So I notice that my rate is two over three, which is less than one. So I know that this is an exponential decay. So if I remember, it's gonna always be decreasing across the y-axis and then approach zero on the right side. So my graph will look like that. Again, you have it in your notes for exponential decay. You can see it again. It's always decreasing. Think of decreasing and decay. And then that will help you remember the graph. So now that I have my picture, I know that the limit as x approaches negative infinity for g of x is equal to infinity because, again, I can see it where it's increasing without bound. For the right limit, the limit as x approaches positive infinity for g of x will be equal to zero. Again, I see it approaching the x-axis, but never get to it. Uh, example number two is asking me to determine if the function is increasing or decreasing, and if it's concave up or concave down. So looking at 2a, I see the shape. Again, remember, concave up looks like a parabola going up and then concave down looks like a parabola going down so i can see on this shape i have this shape of the u going up so i know that it's concave up and i can see my y values decreasing you can do the arrow pointing to the right and i can see the arrow pointing down again you can also pick a point and then a point to the right of it i can see that it's lower 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 so it's always decreasing same thing for B. I can see that it comes from the U pointing down shape, as you can see here. So I know that it's concave down. And then I know that my Y values are decreasing, right? You can see there, or again, you can pick a few points and see that they're going lower and lower and lower. For C, they gave me an equation. They didn't give me a graph, but I can create the graph based on what we talked about earlier. So my rate is four. So I know that it's exponential growth. So it will look like that. Again, I can see the parabola going up shape. So I know that I'm concave up. And then I also know that I'm increasing. Keep in mind, they could give you some other examples. So I'm gonna write one more example in between here to help you out. So let's write P of X equals negative three times one half to the power of x. When you do this, focus on this part first and then use the negative to reflect over the x-axis to do it. So in this case, again, I know that my original is gonna be exponential decay, so it will look something like that. But since I have a negative in front, I need to reflect over the x-axis right here. So when I draw my graph, it will look like that. 
So if they ask you for any information dealing with P of X right here, make sure you use the red graph to solve it. The other option will be you know, Q of X equals eight times three to the power of X. So for that one, and then put a negative. So again, we'll start with this side. So this will be exponential growth. Again, the negative will make it reflect. So it will look like that. So keep that in mind because you will see some of these examples on your homework. And then you can work with whatever graph you have to find the answer. The last one, it says that they give you selected values for the function f shown in the table above. Determine if f could be linear, quadratic, exponential, or none of these. OK, so let's look at the last example. So I know that I can subtract 1 from all of them. And when I do that, I will get uh, 2, I will get 4, I will get 8, I will get 16, I will get 32. Uh, so basically, you can see that to get from 2 to 4, I need to multiply by 2. 4 to 8, I need to multiply by 2. 8 to 16, multiply by 2. And then 16 to 32 multiply by 2. Uh, we talked about this last time. So if you have a uh, proportionate relationship, uh, basically where I'm multiplying by the same number, I know that this is going to be an exponential function. Uh, so for this one, I know that that exponential function got shifted up 1 as well. So I can use that explanation that we learned last time. I know it's exponential because uh, over equal length input intervals, uh, the output values change proportionally. In addition to that, don't forget to make a note that, th that you do have an exponential function, but that exponential function got shifted up one unit. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something new today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day. See you next time.